How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sunday Night Heat, episode number four. Yes, it's back on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, the show where myself, Kyle Masters, discusses or rants about trending topics in the WWE. You can follow the show on Twitter, join in the conversation and discussion by tweeting at TSNH Show and using the hashtag TSNH. You can also follow the podcast itself on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP, as well as follow and listen to us on YouTube soundcloud itunes stitcher and spreaker we are everywhere for your enjoyment ladies and gentlemen and wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us today's sunday night heat topic is the royal rumble yes i asked you guys on twitter to send me your top five winners for this year and we'll get into that later in the show but before that I kind of want to, like I did in the, in the TNA Sunday Night Heat, I kind of want to do like a brief history of the Royal Rumble, some interesting facts, and you know, just, you know, stuff about the Royal Rumble. I want to do that before we get to that. So, as you know, this year is the 30th anniversary of the Royal Rumble, uh, Royal Rumble 2017. It'll be on January 29th, 2017 this year, and it'll be from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, uh, pretty big stadium. Last time it was there, I think it holds like... Uh, yeah, last time I was there, it, it held like 60,000 people. It was back in 1997 uh, where Stone Cold Steve Austin won that Rumble. Uh, I went and rewatched that one. That was pretty cool. And it was incredible to see how many fans there for a Royal Rumble. Like it, it, it had like a WrestleMania atmosphere. So I'm hoping for that this year uh, at this year's Royal Rumble. I know it's going to be a good one. Um, so yeah, San Antonio, Texas. Obviously, we all know the hometown of Shawn Michaels, the Heartbreak Kid. The main event of that Royal Rumble was the Heartbreak Kid in a match versus Psycho Sid for the WWF Heavyweight Championship. Um, the Royal Rumble match itself was the co-main event. Um, so it was a, is it actually a half decent Royal Rumble when I watch it? Uh, there's a lot of people I've seen too. I'm like, Oh, who? Like I had to go back and like redo history on them and see where they came from. But it was actually a really good event. Um, uh, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it, it's not like what we're used to now, but I mean, watching old wrestling, you, you got to have like a, a certain taste for it. And I, I have that taste. So I liked it. Um, let's get into some Royal Rumble facts, shall we? Uh, the most wins, if you guys all know, and if you don't know, is is Stone Cold Steve Austin. He has three Royal Rumble wins. Um, I think the last one was the 97 one. Uh, only five people have won it twice. This includes John Cena, Hulk Hogan, Shawn Michaels, Batista, and just recently, as we saw last year, Triple H. Uh, Batista is the only person uh, from the same Royal Rumble, like to win from the same Royal Rumble spot. Uh, for both times so he entered in at the same spot for both times i think it was number 30 no i don't remember which spot it was but uh batista won it from the same spot twice so he's the only man to ever do that um some more facts entries number one to ten have won have produced seven winners entries 11 to 24 winners and 21 to 30 19 and that includes the times where it went to 40 so it averaged out between the 21 and 30 entries um it's gonna be interesting to see what they do this year if they continue with the current streak of 21 to 30 numbered entrant or are they gonna go somewhere between 11 and 20 there's only been four winners that could be something new or you know it could be number one or anywhere between one and ten there's only been seven winners for that category uh specifically most eliminations if you don't know uh, i i personally do know because they mention it every single goddamn Royal rumble and that's kane he has 44 total eliminations in his career that's a huge feat i think the second is Shawn michaels i think he has 41 so it's going to be interesting to see if anyone can even come close to kane that's a lot of people eliminated um most eliminations in a single Royal rumble match uh, just got beat or yeah, the record just got beaten. It was Kane before, but Roman Reigns beat it with 12 now. Uh, Kane had 11, and I think that was actually this past Royal Rumble where uh, he was the last two with Triple H. So Roman Reigns holds that record with 12. Uh, longest time in a Royal Rumble match was Rey Mysterio. He was in the match for an hour and two minutes and 12 seconds, and I believe that's the one he won back in 2006. The shortest time in the Royal Rumble match, Santino Morella with 1.9 seconds in 2009, if you guys don't remember, basically just made to the top of the ring apron, and I think he got thrown out or something like that. Actually, I have to go back and look at that and see how quick it was and how he got eliminated, but Santino Morella holds that <laughs> that unfortunate record. Shortest time in a Royal Rumble and winning it, John Cena. He lasted 22 minutes and 11 seconds back in 2011. Um... 
longest time in a Royal Rumble total throughout their entire career. So basically, it takes each time you're in the Royal Rumble, they take your time and add it to the next time you're in the Royal Rumble. So total, Triple H, he's been in the Royal Rumble for a total of three hours, 59 minutes, and 37 seconds, so almost hitting that four-hour mark. We'll see if he'll get to that uh, with this year. He might be an entrant. Who knows? Um, now in the difference between heels and faces... So there's been 29 Royal Rumbles, 19 faces have won, and 10 heels have won in the history. Uh, Some people might like to change that, but I went based off what they were at the time, heel or face. So 19 face, heel, only won it 10 times. So it's going to be interesting to see who wins it this year. Um, Yeah, I think yeah, that's it. Uh, For Twitter facts, that's pretty much it, guys. So interesting. I think there's a lot of good facts out there. I wonder if any records will be broken this year. Um, will Roman Reigns add to his tra- total to go for that magic 13 or anything like that? But putting that aside, I asked you guys on Twitter your top five winners for this year's Royal Rumble. Got a lot of interesting responses, a lot of same responses, but I'll be here to read them out for you guys. So let's get right into it. And I have them right here. All right. So. We'll go with the first one. Gamma at Gamma and you want on Twitter puts number one, Finn Balor, number two, Sami Zayn, number three, Chris Jericho, number four, Bray Wyatt. It's a good pick. Number five, Cesaro, but I'm 90% sure it'll be a raw guy. So Wyatt pro probably won't. Yeah. I'm going to have to sort of agree with you there. Gamma. Um, I have a funny feeling it's going to be a raw guy too. I hate, I hate that fact that it could be a raw guy too. Um, I'd love to see a SmackDown guy win and, you know, just, I guess I don't know what you just want. It's just, I guess, boost SmackDown is what I'm trying to say. Because it's not like they need to get boosted. Because basically, they've been the better show the last couple of weeks. But, um, yep, those are his top five. Thank you, Gamma. And you won. Next comes from Chuck Wilson. Our boy Chuck Wilson. He puts Corbin, Balor, Taker, Bray, or Cena for winners. A sixth would be Strowman. Strowman is not a bad pick at all, Mr. Chuck. Because <laughs> you just look at his history so far and... And pretty dominant. He'd be pretty. I mean, he could be one of those guys where they have a spot in the match where some small guy ends up eliminating him, which will probably happen. But we'll see. But that's a good six pick. Next one, glorious Greg at Gillies nine two nine on Twitter. He puts my top five superstars to win the Rumble are Zayn, Corbin, Balor, Rollins, or Cruz or Miz. I would love to see Apollo Cruz win, man. That'd be like a huge like jump to his career because <laughs> right now he's been doing nothing and been literally becoming a jobber and that sucks because Apollo Cruz has so much talent and he would I think he would definitely be a good spot to get him over and he'd be a good winner for Rumble that's what I'm just trying to say he'd be a really really good winner um so thank you for that uh Greg that's a interesting pick I would pick Apollo Cruz he's my boy I love Apollo Cruz Next comes from Michael Chow at Real Michael Chow on Twitter he's got a little paragraph for me to read first he says, the Royal Rumble is my favorite pay-per-view of the year. His favorite moment was Ro- <laughs> rookie Maven eliminating The Undertaker from the Royal Rumble. I remember that. And because I'm a huge Undertaker fan, I was actually pissed. I remember watching that, and I was really pissed off. I'm like, how the hell is this little rookie guy eliminate The Undertaker of all people? I was so mad. Um, he puts, it was so shocking as The Undertaker was my favorite. Oh, it was his favorite, too, to win that year. Oh, man, that would have been great if he won that year. Oh, just thinking about it now, that would have been perfect. And it was an early elimination, too. Uh, his favorite Royal Rumble was 2002 with returning Triple H winning his first Royal Rumble. What was your favorite Royal Rumble? <laughs> oh, God, this is tough. Uh, my favorite Royal Rumble. There's a lot out there. Um, you know what? I'm going to have to go with it. And it sucks. I only picked this would be my favorite before what happened to him personally in his life but i have to say chris benoit winning the royal rumble uh 2004 and going on to wrestlemania to face triple h and Shawn michaels out of all people no one thought that chris benoit was going to win the world title here guys like at that time chris benoit was the underdog winning the royal rumble no one thought that he was going to be the one to win the world heavyweight championship at wrestlemania 20 and he ends up defying the odds and beating triple h and Shawn michaels in the same match to win the world heavyweight title that was a his greatest accomplishment of his career and like before his personal history came into play, I thought that was like my favorite rumble and it still is to this day. Like I don't have another one right now, but um, yeah, I do think that that would be my favorite rumble, Michael Chow. So getting into his picks for this year's rumble, he puts number one, Finn Balor, an injury return to the rumble. They could push and could use 
and could be as big as Triple H when he returned in 2002. I like that idea. There would be likes to repeat a lot of stuff, as we all know. They like to repeat lots of things, so I could see them doing it that way. Number two, The Undertaker. I predict The Undertaker will appear on SmackDown Live to announce his entry into the Royal Rumble. Yes, that's a good uh, idea right there, too, Michael Chavez. We'll get into my picks as well. Number three puts Chris Jericho so popular right now, and he's never won in his entire 16 and a half year career. Shocking. That is shocking. You think about Chris Jericho in all his accomplishments, he's never won the Royal Rumble once, or even won the Money in the Bank briefcase match. And he's ne- he invented that. <laughs> he still hasn't won it. Oh, poor Chris Jericho. But I mean, that's taken nothing aside from his unreal career. But it'd be great to see Chris Jericho win for once. Number four, Brock Lesnar, heavy favorite to win this year. Obviously, Brock Lesnar is a heavy favorite for anything in the WWE right now. And number five, he puts Bailey to predict. He predicts her to win a small woman's uh, Royal Rumble. Hashtag Divas Revolution. And I agree with that. I think that we might see a a small woman's Royal Rumble this year because they are going to extend the Royal Rumble uh, another hour. So I, I could see it. I think I could see it happening. It'll probably be like a co-main event Royal Rumble or somewhere in there. I could do like another triple main event like they always like to do recently. Fucking so stupid. But yeah, I see that happening. That'd be pretty cool to see a women's Royal Rumble. I would love to see that. But those are your Twitter guy, Twitter questions that are the answers to my Twitter question from you guys. I appreciate it as always. So now we'll get into my top five winners for the 2017 Royal Rumble. So we'll go from back, so from five to one, I'll start with number five. I'm choosing The Rock, and here's the reason. Lesnar versus Owens for the title will eventually happen. We all know that, and it's all, all sorry, all signs are pointing towards the Royal Rumble. Lesnar versus Owens for the Universal title. Lesnar will win, unfortunately, because Kevin Owens is my boy. Lesnar's going to win, and it's going to set up a match with the Royal Rumble winner who will be The Rock, and it will be at WrestleMania. This is a long overdue rematch, I think, and it's very likely that it could take a four month build up, and it will, and it should, because hard, these guys hardly appear on TV, so they're perfect for each other. Both these guys like spend two times on TV a month, maybe even three months apart. They're hardly on TV. Lesnar could win, too. I think Lesnar would win at WrestleMania, too. And it would solidify that he is the better athlete over them, too. I mean, you can't have The Rock win the Universal title at WrestleMania because you'd have to drop it after because he has like a billion movies to, to to film after that and to go promote. So, But this would be a good idea for Rock to promote his current movies coming out. And he comes back to the Royal Rumble. And he would enter in at number 30 to surprise everybody and win it that way. So, you know, he wouldn't have to do that much work. And Hollywood wouldn't be scared of him getting injured. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be night number five. Number four, The Undertaker agreeing with Michael Chow. Um, my reason is it will set up a final match at WrestleMania with the champion. And I think because he's on SmackDown, the champion will be John Cena, who will win the title eventually and becoming the 16 time champion and tying Ric Flair's record. Um, I just, that's too perfect and too good that it should happen. Um, a match at Mania will definitely be the title versus career. Undertaker will challenge for the title, and he will say, if I don't win it, my career is over. And maybe like vice versa with Cena. If Cena loses the title, his career is over. They can do a lot with this match. It's a dream match that everyone wants to see. It's a match Vince wants set up, so why not have it this way? Have Cena win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship and hold on to it till WrestleMania. Have him win it at like, the Royal Rumble or something like that as well. Have Undertaker win that Royal Rumble and challenge Cena, and that could be the main event of WrestleMania, and people would go home happy with that. Like It's a dream match everyone wants to see. It's just it's going to happen. Um, the one thing I'm going to agree with Michael Chow, I think this Tuesday he is going to be announcing his entrance into the Royal Rumble. So if he does, I'm saying Undertaker enters anywhere between 20 and 30. I don't think he's going to be one of those guys to be in the match that long. I mean, Undertaker's body can only take so much. He could even be number 30. We'll see. But if that, if I'm going to choose the Undertaker, I think it should be set up that way. And that this Tuesday, he should uh, uh, announce he's entered into the Royal Rumble. So that comes in at number four. Number three is a pick that no one else has picked it through the questions and i'm gonna shock you guys all right now bobby rude the reason it is a matter of time before this guy gets called up we know his age he's he's getting there in age uh, so he he's not going to be nxt forever um he's so over right now nxt as well like we all see his entrance to nxt brooklyn and how over he can get and just imagine how over he's gonna get nxt toronto his hometown but what a way to make his main roster debut but at the royal rumble 
and you would definitely go to the flagship show Raw, or or he could win the Royal Rumble, and there would be a war between both GMs and commissioners to try to get him to sign on the respective brand and face their champion at WrestleMania in the main event. I could definitely see that happening. Shane and Daniel Bryan trying hard to get Bobby Roode on Team Blue and, and like Stephanie and Mick Foley just like promoting the shit out of Raw saying like you definitely deserve to be on Raw you can be the first universal champion and I can see like Dana Bryan and, and Shane Mann making fun of that title again just like they did on Talking Smack so that would be a really cool idea um, if he chose SmackDown the possible champions you could face to be an ultimate championship match at Wrestlemania I think it would either be John Cena or AJ Styles I think the, the more of a dream match is AJ Styles that'd be sick but it would be cool to see him face John Cena as well the possible champions for him to face on Raw if he came over to Raw would be Kevin Owens obviously Kevin Owens or Bobby Roode is another dream match that people want to see as well Finn Balor that'd be pretty cool Finn Balor coming back winning the Universal Championship from injury and then facing Bobby Roode at Wrestlemania that'd be really cool or if all <laughs> out of all people, Chris Jericho. What if Chris Jericho became the Universal Champion by pinning his best friend Kevin Owens in a match? Because we know that's going to happen sometime. Like We know they're going to face each other, but why not Chris Jericho win the Universal title and face Bobby Roode in a freaking dream matchup for the century at WrestleMania? That match would be epic. Um, so Roode would go on. I think Roode would actually win the title at WrestleMania too. Regardless of who he's facing, I think he would win the title at WrestleMania. That'd be unreal. Like the WrestleMania type crowd would love Bobby Roode winning. They're so NXT and like IWC heavy. It's crazy. Um, and I think Roode would be entering in at number 30 this year. Definitely. Um, he could go a little bit earlier, but I think I see him as a better entrant at number 30. Moving on. We got number two and i'm picking finn balor like all y'all you picked all finn balor i'm gonna pick finn balor too obvious entrant um would surprise everyone from coming back from injury early as he's set to come back around january february or just um so i think that would be a perfect spot i mean end of january it's, it's almost like it's too perfect and too good to be true or maybe his injury is going to take longer to heal who knows but it would definitely be a surprise Everyone wants Balor to return at that point and be in the Royal Rumble, so I think it's going to happen, um, regardless of my pick or not. And I think he would win the Royal Rumble too and set up a match at Mania for the Universal Title. His basically his official rematch because he never lost the title due to injury, so it would only make sense. You know, maybe he maybe he returns before the Royal Rumble and like Stephanie doesn't give him his rematch right away, or he gets it and he gets screwed. But then he says, "Okay, I'm going to go into the Royal Rumble and try to win it back." Something like that. I think that that's something that could happen with Finn Balor. I think Finn Balor would enter anywhere between 20 and 30, or maybe they do the whole underdog thing with him, but uh, I think uh, more likely be 20 and 30 just because uh, they don't want to risk a re-injuring Finn Balor again. So Finn Balor, another great pick. So on to my number one pick and who I think is going to win the Royal Rumble this year. And this is a little early because I know when we do our Royal Rumble predictions, that's when I should be revealing it, but I'm going to reveal it right now, and I'm going to stick with it uh, until something changes. I'm picking Sami Zayn. The reason, it would be the perfect underdog story for him to win. Zayn literally needs something huge right now. And I, I mean something huge. Because he's obviously not getting the obvious title shot anytime soon. doesn't look like it. He's not going to get that title shot one-on-one at all. doesn't look like it. So he needs something big. Like right now, he's just like slipping into the mid card and... I feel Sami Zayn should be in the in the top card. He he's he has main main event level caliber all written all over him. Um, he would definitely challenge for the Universal Championship. There are a couple possible champions you could face at WrestleMania. The obvious one, Kevin Owens. We know the war between Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Um, huge history between these two, and we've seen in WWE, and we know about their history before WWE. So, what a way to, to like captivate it all at WrestleMania for the Universal Title. We know they can put on an epic match. So, and the crowd would be split right down the middle. Um, another. Another champion, Brock Lesnar. What if Brock Lesnar won the Universal Championship? This would be another spot for the perfect underdog story. Underdog winning the Royal Rumble and then going on to WrestleMania and beating Brock Lesnar for that Universal title in an underdog story. Like that would be just huge and epic. The crowd would go on, like just go ballistic at WrestleMania. I think it'd be great. And maybe another one. This is a possible champion, and this literally has match of the year written all over it. Sami Zayn versus Finn Balor. There wouldn't be a heel in this match. It would just be two faces facing each other for the Universal Championship, and man, could they pull off match of the year. 
That would be epic if Finn Balor came back from injury, won the Universal title, and then Sami Zayn challenges him with his Royal Rumble win at WrestleMania for the Universal Championship. Holy crap. I hope that actually happens because I would mark out huge. And I think that if Sami Zayn does go into the Royal Rumble and wins it, he would be anywhere between the number one and number 10 entrant. Um, so that would be, that would go along with the underdog story as well for Sami Zayn. So guys, yeah, those are my picks. So number one, Sami Zayn, two, Finn Balor, three, Bobby Roode, four, The Undertaker, and five, The Rock. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do this year. There's not a clear cut favorite going into this year's Royal Rumble. So it's going to be crazy to see what happens. And I'm glad it's in the big stadium. Um, 60,000 people is going to be a great atmosphere. I can't wait for the Royal Rumble, but we have to go through Survivor Series and the December pay-per-views first. Other than that, guys, that's going to do it for the Sunday Night Heat number episode number four on the Hosebar Wrestling Podcast. A show where myself, Kyle Masters, discusses and rants about training topics in WWE. Remember, you can follow the show on Twitter at TSNH Show and use the hashtag TSNH. You can follow the podcast itself on Twitter at No Holds Bar WP, and you can follow it as well on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. That's it for today's show, guys. I'm Kyle Masters. Stay fired up, y'all. <laughs>